All right. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Palm Springs Unified School District regular meeting of the Board of Education. Today is Tuesday, March 14th, 2023. I will now call the meeting to order. May we get a roll call, please? Board Member Jarrell? Here. Board Member Cornette? Here. Board Clerk Espericueta? Here. Board President Girardi? Here. And we have Student Board Member Carl? Here. And Student Board Member Young? Here. And uh, Board Member Irvin is absent tonight. Thank you very much. Next item is the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please stand? And our student board member, Mariah Young, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And if you would, please stand, uh, remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. This evening we're going to have a moment of silence. Uh, we'll be observed for Heath Papp. Heath began his career at Palm Springs Unified School District in 1997. Mr. Papp dedicated 20 years of service to Palm Springs Unified as a teacher at Vista Del Monte, Bubbling Wells, Landau, Cabot Yerksa, Raymond Cree, Bella Vista, and Cahuilla Elementary School. Thank you very much. All right, next up is a reading of our mission statement and our student board member, Christopher Caro, is gonna read that statement for us. All members of the Palm Springs Unified School District are united in our commitment to equity. We create deep, meaningful learning opportunities, build professionalism, and engage parents and community to ensure success for all students. All students graduate with the skills, capacities, and confidence needed to succeed in a rapidly changing world. Thank you, Christopher. Next up is a report on closed session items. Clerk Esperacueta, are there any closed session items to report this evening? Uh, President Girardi, there are no closed session items to report. Okay, thank you very much. Item eight is approval of the agenda. Um, I would like to remove item 14T. And with that removal, can we get a motion to approve the agenda uh, for tonight? Move for approval. I have a motion, how about a second? second? We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. That brings us to our student board member reports. And the first report will be presented by Mount San Jacinto High School student board member, Mariah Young. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mariah Young. I'm the student board representative for Mount San Jacinto Alternative High Schools, located in Cathedral City, as well as our Desert Hot Springs campus, which is better known as Edward Winslow. So, starting off with sports. As soccer season comes to an end, MSJ's boys and girls teams of Cathedral City played undefeated throughout the whole season. For staff appreciation, in, appre in appreciation for National Counseling Week, February 7th, we recognize three staff members for their hard work and dedication towards students' education. Our counselors, Ms. Venezuela and Ms. Schmidt, and a big congratulations to Mr. Rowan for being elected Teacher of the Year. Thank you for everything you guys do for our students and school. February 14th, students and staff celebrated Valentine's Day by dressing up in pink and red love-themed outfits, while February 15th, students and staff dressed in dark, gloomy-themed outfits for Love is Dead Day. Model School Award. MSJ Alternative High Schools is proud to be recognized as a model continuation school for the state of California, being outstanding in student academic achievement, behavior, and representation. To celebrate, thank you. <laughs> to celebrate our students and staff for their hard work, we will be having an upcoming field day this March. Students will be having a fun field day with booths, games, and other activities outside. 
Some important upcoming events that we are having soon for MSJ students include this Friday, a COD trip for graduating seniors to attend College of the Desert. Our Mathletes Club of Advanced Math students will be taking their statewide SBAC testing. Our DHS campus will be hosting their first blood drive. Grad night trip to Mount Magic Mountain for seniors on both campuses. Academic assemblies to celebrate quarter three all-stars and nearly 80 MSJ seniors will be graduating the end of this quarter. So both of our MSJ campuses have seen their largest student enrollment in many years, and the Cathedral City and Desert Hot Springs campuses will be receiving about 100 stu new students this next quarter. On behalf of myself and the students and staff of MSJ, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mariah. <laughs> okay. Our next report will be from Christopher Caro from Rancho Mirage High School. I hope you're all doing well today. Since my last meeting was only in February, I don't have a lot of news to share, but thankfully we've got a spirit week this week, so I'll begin with that. So to the left is a little TikTok that my class made. Um, they're, it's one of the TikToks that we've been making to promote our spirit weeks and some of our events. Uh, yesterday, Monday, uh, was socks, Crocs, or Birkenstocks. Students were asked to wear cool socks, socks on Crocs, or socks on Birkenstocks. Today, we had bring anything but a water bottle day, so we asked students to bring in anything but an actual water bottle. Uh, some of my favorites were bags, crock pots, and the five gallons uh, tanks that kids were carrying around all day. Tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, we have When I Grow Up, so we're asking students to wear clothing from what childhood dream career they had, uh, so if they wanted to be a nurse when they were little, then they're going to dress up like a nurse tomorrow. On Thursday, it's over the rainbow. So seniors are going to be wearing orange. Juniors are going to be wearing purple. Sophomores are going to be wearing blue. And freshmen are going to be wearing red to represent their classes. Friday is Shrek Day. So you'd wear gold or green to show off your Shrek vibes. Um, spring sports. So as far as sports go, we've been doing pretty good for the most part. Baseball has been winning with a varsity score so far of 7-2. to two. Boys golf is pretty close right now with a 12-15 to 15 score. Softball is having a great season as well with a 6-2 to two score so far. Boys tennis hasn't won a match yet, but they're working on it as they've only had two games. And track and field just began their invitationals and in track meet season, which they've been doing great with so far. Starting this Friday... We have a two weekend special performance put on at the Helen Gale Performing Arts Center, uh, our theater. Our theater program will be performing the Shrek musical, and we're excited to see how they do. After months of rehearsals, I'm sure they're beyond excited to perform as well. Following this month, we're beginning our Buff Ball and Powder Puff signups. It's going to be juniors versus senior boys and girls. Boys are going to be playing volleyball, girls are going to be playing football. Many students are eager and excited to sign up on the 23rd and the 24th of this March, right before prom nominations, which are taking place the 27th and the 28th, preparing to end the year. For now, those are all the updates I've got, and I'd like to thank you all for your time. Thank you, Christopher. <laughs> all right, that brings us to item number 10, which is a special recognition. So. You guys want to join me down below? Chavez, proud principal at James Workman Middle School, and I am excited to present Mrs. Casey Kiss Your Brain Kayberry as this month's Certificated Staff Member of the Month.
Casey is a member of our seventh grade team where she teaches language arts, social studies, and she teaches all levels of ELD. Most importantly, Casey teaches students. Casey has a heart for every student that walks through her door and they feel the same. And for those reasons, I'm so thankful that we have Casey at James Workman. Congratulations, Casey, you deserve this. Vicki Chavez, proud principal of James Workman Middle School, and I am honored to present Mr. Chester Sturgill as this month's Classified Staff Member of the Month. Chester has been with the Palm Springs Unified School District for more than 29 years, serving many years at James Workman Middle School. We are very, very lucky to have Chester and his work ethic at James Workman. He's an asset to our campus. He makes sure that all of our students are always safe, our campus is clean, and whatever we have going on, Chester's behind the scenes making sure that we have everything set up and safe, ready to go. I'm so thankful to have Chester at our campus. Chester, thank you so much for everything you do. You certainly deserve this recognition. Thank you. First, I'd like to honor Casey K. Berry. If you want to come on up, we've got some nice things to say about you besides the video. Mrs. K. Berry is thoughtful and thorough in all that she does. She is well liked by her colleagues, students, and their parents. This year, Mrs. K. Berry eagerly took the role of our ELD teacher, something that she had no experience in. Walking into her class during this course, though you, one would not know that she is new. Her students are thriving and enjoying the environment she has created. Students feel comfortable and confident in their learning. She is nothing short of amazing. Mrs. K. Berry, on behalf of the students and staff of James Workman Middle School, members of the Governing Board and Administration, it is a pleasure to present you with this plaque of recognition as Certificated Employee of the Month for March 2023. Is there anyone in the audience you'd like to recognize? Okay. Um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to my admin, Vicki Chavez, Coley, Manny. Um, Bayardo, I wouldn't be able to do this without your guys' support. My colleagues back at James Workman, they know who they are and they're absolutely amazing. My students, um, this wouldn't be without them. They would tell me, Miss K, go slay. Uh, <laughs> and then my beautiful family, they're my rock, they're my everything. And lastly, thank you, Palm Springs Unified. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Stur, can you come in? And uh, Chester is a student is an exceptional employee who takes pride in his work. He is dependable and is an important part of our team. He is quick to respond to the needs of all, and if he cannot fix the issue, he makes sure to reach out to someone who can. Chester is a positive influence in our student and moral care and concern for all. He is an important member of our community event team. He ensures that everything is well set up and ready to go. His dedication to our student and school is unparalleled. 
We are so grateful to have him on our campus. Mr. Sturgeo, on behalf of the student and staff of Jen Warman Middle School, members of the Governing Board and Administration, it is a pleasure to present you with this plate of recognition as classified employees at the month for March 2023. Thank you. Thank you. you have anyone in the audience that you want? I'd just like to thank my administration because they've been nothing but supportful to me the whole time that we've been here together. And uh, I really feel kind of guilty for getting this because the people that are really keeping our school put together and clean are actually there right now working. So I'll have to make sure and share this with them when I get back. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And then we give a D1 to you. The Shiny Apple Award, Palm Springs Rotary Club, for Michelle Nobleman. Are they here? Are you, come on up. Kuya Elementary School would like to extend its appreciation to the Palm Springs Rotary Club for their generosity and continued dedication to PSUSD students. The Palm Springs Rotary Club never hesitates to help district students. When a request for support is submitted, the Rotary Club springs into action. They have made generous donations of books, uniforms, and glasses. The PS Rotary Club engages with families, helping, a schedule, help, helping to schedule eye exams and provide financial support for services and glasses when there is a need. Their contributions have made a difference in the lives of many students over the years. In collaboration with Ms. Shauna Smith, the Palm Springs Rotary Club resumed their early act club at Kuya Elementary. This club engages students in social service projects and teaches students that it, what it means to be a ro Rotarian. Excuse me. They foster 21st century leadership skills and character traits that are highly valued. On behalf of the students and staff of Palm Springs Unified School District, members of the governing board and administration, it is a pleasure to present the Palm Springs Rotary Club with the district's Shiny Apple Award. And since we need money to do all of these wonderful things, here's our fundraiser. April 12th, we're doing a documentary um, at the Palm Springs Cultural Center. It's about POWs, two that were in POWs as children during World War II in the Philippines and in um, Europe, and then five who were in Vietnam in the Hanoi Hilton. Two or three of those men will be with us the evening of the, of the documentary, as well as the filmmaker. So we're looking forward to seeing all of you. And I have flyers. <laughs> this is also Carl Kruger. He is the president-elect. Just want to say thank you for PS, PS Unified. We appreciate it.
I do have uh, three speaker cards here. Please remember all comments are to be directed to the board, be under three minutes, and shall be devoid of any personal attacks. Members of the public are expected to maintain a professional and courteous decorum during public comments. And please understand, since probably what you're talking about is not agendized, the board cannot respond during public comments. Uh, my first comment is Ke Kashia Gaines. Keisha, Keisha Gaines. Hello everyone, I am a parent of a student at um, Raymond Creek Middle School and I have somewhat of a bone to pick with the principal. Um, I feel he is overly targeting my kid. I don't have the most well-behaved kid there. I know that he can give the administration some issues, but I do think that the principal is going out of his way to I'm not sure how many suspensions it takes to get a kid kicked out of school, but I feel like that's where we're headed. Um, so I would like someone to um, please contact me so that we can speak. He doesn't allow a lot of speeches just like, oh, here, this is what it is, no question, that's it, here you go, and that's it, and you know, we're done with that. So if I can have somebody um, reach out to me so that we can um, maybe come up with some resolve. Um, and really find out what the issue is as to why he is over targeting my kid. My kid is at lunch going to the restroom and he's having someone follow to see whatever he's doing and he gets suspended for whatever the staff member accused him and another student of when their statements said something completely opposite. And there was no, no way to give any rebuttal, ask any questions, none of that was allowed because that's not what we do at Raymond Cree. So um, my information is there, so if somebody can reach out, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gaines. Our next uh, public speaker is Joe Mitchell, Sr. everybody doing this evening? Of course, well. my name is Josiah Mitchell. Uh, my son goes to Palm Springs High School. I'm also a part of uh, APAC and uh, LPAC. And I'm here to speak on the HBCU tour um, and speak on behalf of APAC as well. APAC would like a full clarification on why African-American woman is not attending or able to participate in the HBCU tour. It is instrumental for these young African-American students to have a chaperone with shared backgrounds, traditions, social values, collective activities and interests. This will be an amazing time to have two different generations from the same culture and backgrounds to have these life-changing experiences <clears throat> together. And um, once again, APAC is asking for a female African-American representation on this tour. And, and just real quick, I would like to also speak on, um, uh, Dr. Sweezy has a great event, uh, Breakfast with Sweezy, I believe it's called, but it's at 7.30 in the morning, and people with kids, it is hard for me to try to go, I have two sons, I have to get dressed in the morning. So if we can allocate a different time for that, I would love to be a part of that as well. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mitchell. <clears throat> I think it's called Mornings with Mike, if I understand. <laughs> And my final speaker card is uh, Mr. Jarvis Crawford, please. Good evening, everyone. Um, as a parent group, I'm speaking on behalf of APAC and the HBCU tour. As a parent group, APAC has set trends of excellence, followed by our new parent advisory groups formed last year, the HPAC, NPAC, LGBTQ, and JBA. We hear the future is bright with upcoming trips such as the Latin College Tour and the Junior Black Achievers possibly going on a college trip, which makes us extremely excited to be a part of this district. However, the dismissal over our input on important decisions that concern APAC is heartbreaking. 
Over the past uh, six months, there have been requests that APAC has had for the school district, and uh, many of those decisions were made without, the, without APAC's um, input, and we feel that some of that input is lacking. Uh, the last time that I was here, I was speaking in regards to the HBCU trip because we had just found out that there will not be an African American uh, female on the trip. Um, we even consulted early on, and had we known information early on, we could have helped locate uh, another African American to, a, to a, a, attend this trip. Well, we actually did. So two days later, we had uh, located two uh, African American um, folks that work with the Palm Springs Unified School District and send an email requesting that they be considered. Um, even though when we had spoke last time, we were told um, by the board, I'm not sure if it was the, the president or not, to say, well, you know, this is something that we can definitely make doable. Well, it wasn't. We were told that uh, they would not be considered. Um, I don't want to say, uh, I'm going to paraphrase, but it was told us by Dr. Kovacs that we would not be able to be considered to have an African-American lady attend the trip. Um, APAC was informed, you know, at a meeting back August 23rd about decisions that were made by the district on items such as the HBCU application process, uh, the dates, the presentation, tour dates, things of that nature. And this was done early on, almost like the second week, second or third week of school, uh, school that just started. And we were like, well, hey, let's take some time to see if we can get more kids that are involved or we can, we can go over this process a little bit more. But it was already done. Uh, there was a flyer that was made for the HBCU tour and uh, we didn't get a chance to review it before it went out, but we got to see it as it went out. Uh, HBCU also, uh, we wanted for our monthly APAC meeting in October to announce the selected HB2, HBCU tour students. And um, there were just a lot of things that were happening and we feel as if APAC initiated the HBCU college tour by advocating to the district and we would like to be a part of the decision making as well. We think it would be a great idea to create a small subcommittee that consists of maybe a couple African American parent advisory committee members, two school district employees, or just maybe some folks from the community. We want to continue to work together with Palm Springs Unified School District and not feel like we've been dictated to on a, a trip that we think will benefit our students. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crawford. Okay. Well, I see no more speaker cards, so then we'll go on to uh, board member comments. Does anybody have anything they'd like to share this evening? Madonna, sure. All right. Uh, I wrote an email. I just uh, start on a little serious note uh, to some of my co-board members about how in our district we might need to change our ways around the idea of equity. And it would mean major changes that take time and energy and maybe innovation and creativity. And so we have an equity statement that we believe in and we wrote. And um, we're committed to an equitable, socially just, anti-racist educational system. And I think that um, in my heart, I feel that we need to do more on this policy. And what that means would be maybe a team of people, including our board has already have, has a committee, uh, to bring about a campaign to create signs that we here are anti-racist. Just as at schools we are anti-guns. You are not allowed to have alcohol on com campus. We are not allowed to use racial slurs on this campus. And so across the district, the, the, the word is written that we will not tolerate this in our schools. And I say that uh, because at meetings with parents, I have heard incidents of, of language and uh, treatment that is unjust. And so um, maybe um, we could uh, ask uh, perhaps some of our board who's on, who are on the committee to think about um, some, some type of signage or campaign to show in words our, our, our commitment to this policy statement. So that's number one, that was real serious. But number two, um, I'm excited that I had a chance to read Across America with fourth graders. And I, that's one of my favorite grades, and I was at Dell and Lindley. 
and I had the chance to introduce them to the book called Fables by Ar Arnold Lobel. And uh, there was one called The Bad Kangaroo, and um, it was, each fable tells a moral, and I brought the props, and I had the kids dress as the kangaroos and play out the fable. And it was really a treat to see that come to life and the engagement in the classroom of Maggie Tapia. And every, each year they invite me back, and I, I don't know what I'm gonna do next year to top this year. It was a joy to be uh, in school and reading with our kids. Um, then again, on March 4th, the Stardust Performing Arts Expo was at um, Cathedral City High School, and I got to see the Palm Springs Honor Choir, Cathedral City Choirs, the Cielo Vista Choir with percussion, the Cathedral City Chamber Singers, the Della Lindley Elementary Choir, first time performing in front of a live audience, uh, and the DHS Dance Team and they got first and third place an award-winning state competition just recently on Knott's Berry Farm. I also had a chance to uh, hear one of the jazz bands, and I think if you um, see what's changed about our district after COVID in a positive way is the unity of our groups. There is no more competition, one school doing their you know, celebration performing performances. All of the schools were there and invited. And they even invited a school districts from Desert Sands, Coachella, Xavier Prep was there. So I am so excited to see the uni unity and the collaboration that is coming together after being separated uh, for may maybe many years before our COVID. Uh, then I was, after the festival, the picnic that the district hosted at Ruth Hardy Park for our employees was really a treat. And I appreciate all of the planning and work and uh, it's always a joy to be uh, seeing people and families uh, out in the park from the district office center, uh, making the best time of the Saturday, 300 people together and enjoying um, each other and having fun. So, and then um, I recently went with our superintendent and has accepted a, an award on behalf of the Board of Education uh, for our schools and um, with Dr. Karen Dimmick and Dr. Deanna Killian and uh, we accepted awards for middle schools to watch. And congratulations again, Nellie Kaufman Middle School and James Workin Middle School. So we are proud of them. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Member Cornett. Uh, I want to thank the people who provided uh, public comments tonight. Uh, we always want to hear from the public and your concerns. And I do hope that administration has heard your concerns and your suggestions. I want to thank board student board members Christopher and Mariah for your great reports as always. Congratulations. Um, I think member Jarrell has covered most of the past weeks. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> uh, events and I'm really looking forward to all of the high school plays and the drone tournaments that are coming up. Again, congratulations to Nellie Kaufman, James Workman, on being awarded Middle Schools to Watch, and also MSJ on being awarded Model uh, Continuation School. Uh, I also agree with Member Jarrell about our equity in Palm Springs Unified School District. So thank you. Go right ahead. Thank you. And um, I want to start congratulating to all of the administrator and staff of Nelly Kosman Middle School and Jed Warmer Middle School for their official designation as Ada California School to Watch. Congratulations. And on, on March 1st, I attended the Winter Sport Award events at Cathedral City High School to recognize the all Cathedral City High School athletes in different categories. Basketball, water polo, soccer, wrestling, varsity, sure. And this is, I know that is only one school, all, all schools do a similar events, 
but it's one example that all um, opportunity that the student have in this power uh, to to be in, in one sport sport that they uh, decide to get it. On on March third, I attended the Chase Azul uh, DHS High School celebrating Black Resiliency Resilience. And there is no doubt that all events have it have a unique identity, but a common purpose uh, to unite unite the community in general focus on supporting the Palm Spring Unified School District student to be academic and social emotional successful. On March 4, I assisted to the event at Catira City High School Stardust performing our Expo. Uh, in this uh, day, was different performing from, from multiple schools. They performed uh, dance teams, ballet for Corico, sh sh short choir, and jazz bands, and, and other categories. In, in March, I want to, to highlight about another uh, part of the uh, process that we do as board members, that is the, um, the agenda planning. Today, we start at 2, at 2 p.m. and still here. And also the agenda planning was a long, long process, like more, more than one hour. And, and yesterday, on March 13, I attended the English, the ERL CTEs, call it the Future Look Brick event, connecting English learners to career and technical education. On this occasion, the day explaining all the academies that Rancho Mirad High School has. Two, two Rancho Mirad High School students from Race Academy, Race Auromori Career Education, giving the presentation on how the program works and the benefits are regist registering in one, uh, one of them. I'm uh, one of the administrators uh, say the very um, mot motivational words saying that uh, don't, don't be afraid to be part of one academy. Don't believe that that is to direct you to one um, vocational career and, and don't dream higher. That is not true. And that is only to increase your opportunity to have extra tools in your adult life and at the same time to be successful for, for uh, university careers. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, real quick, I too would like to congratulate the uh, administration, faculty, and staff at James Workman Middle School and Nellie Kaufman for being the, getting the honor of schools to watch this year. It's a tremendous honor. Uh, I too uh, participated in reading Across America. I got to read at Cabot Yerksa, which was a, I got, you guys, it's so much fun, it should be illegal to go read to these kids. I, I tell you, I got to read a book called Crayon. They gave me this hat that made me look like a crayon. It was really a lot of fun. And I want to thank Jody Diaz for putting that on. Uh, the picnic put on by our administrative staff was tremendous. I think everybody had a real wonderful time. Uh, Taste of Soul was really well attended. I was surprised because um, they had to reschedule it uh, because, I forget why now exactly, but I think the rain. They had to reschedule it, but it was still well attended. And one thing that really struck me at that event was the number of site administrators I saw from other schools who were there to support it. And that's one of the things I really respect about this district is how everybody supports each other. I, I see it a lot. Um, I attended the drone camp on Friday for just a little bit on YouTube. It was just a kick. I mean, these kids are, you know, uh, doing drone soccer up there. And Will Carr, who's in our ETIS department, was doing the play-by-play. -play, and they had referees that had referee shirts on. And it was just a lot of fun. I didn't get to hang out too long, but it was fun to watch. I was glad it was on YouTube so I could see it. Um... I also have been attending some schools lately. I want to thank uh, Principal Hager at Rancho Mirage Elementary. 
Uh, what a tremendous job they were doing there. What a beautiful campus. I, I'm embarrassed to say, I think that's the first time I've been to that particular elementary school. I had no idea where it was located. And our schools have beautiful views, but that one is right there against the mountains. It is just gorgeous. Uh, he's doing a great job. I had a wonderful conversation with him. Uh, same with uh, Juanita Perez Chica at uh, Cielo Vista Charter. Uh, they had some kind of special event going on that day. The place was just busting. I mean, the kids were all over the place. They had bouncy houses and things like that. Uh, we got to look at that school, though. I mean, from what she was telling me, it's like 150 over enrolled um, for what it was built for. It's like built for 700, and they got 850 or so. I don't know if my numbers are exactly correct, but it was packed. There was no question about it. Uh, Principal Haga at Rancho Mirage. Uh, high school, had a wonderful talk with her, a wonderful visit. Incredibly impressed with the CTE programs that are going there, that are going on there, the culinary, the automotive, the academics, obviously. Um, it was really, really, I really enjoyed my conversation with her. And then uh, Principal Drummond at Desert Springs Middle School. Um, she's got her hands full, I think, up there. And uh, she's doing a wonderful job. She and her staff are doing a wonderful job. And you know what, I just realized the challenge of that school is it's, it's the way it's built. Students can hide all over the place. Buildings are, are you know, um, giving them good places to sneak out of sight. So I don't know if there's anything we can do about that, but we, we really should take a look at that. I think that's it. Oh, and, and our public speakers tonight, thank you very much for coming in. Um, Mr. Crawford, I, I hope I didn't misspeak or mislead you. I think I said your, your request seems reasonable to me, and it still does tonight. It doesn't seem unreasonable at all. Um, these guys know the challenges or whatever issues are happening. So I, I'm sure if they can make it happen, they will. Okay. So other than that, thank you very much. All right. Thank you, President Girardi. I'll keep my comments very, very brief. Um, the board has been so nice about complimenting James Workman and Nellie Kaufman for being schools to watch, recognize the schools to watch. So now I'm gonna turn it around and recognize the board. So I was able to go with member Jarrell to Monterey to accept this, Madonna accepted this on your behalf, and then I received one for cabinet. So I'd just like to read to the board the recognition that you received from the California Department of Education in partnership with the California League of Educators. Uh, they present this certificate to the Board of Trustees here in Palm Springs Unified for leadership in providing policy, resources, organizational support for fostering positive and productive middle grades learning environments for students and staff, and for an enduring commitment to academic excellence and continued achievement at the district's middle schools. So Madonna accepted this on your behalf. I just wanted that to share that with everybody tonight. And then just my um, other, just very quick comment, we've started our school visits again. And so uh, Dr. Kovach and I, along with members of educational services, will make it to every school over the period of about seven days. So we're out there hitting at least three schools a day. So um, we've had two days of fantastic visits and I look forward to sharing more with the board about what we see and all of the great things that are happening in the district. But with that, I'll turn it back over to you. You know, I've never done this. I have one more comment. I don't usually come back with another comment, but I'm the president, so I'm going to. Uh, you know, I said earlier, I'm real impressed how each of us support each other. When I was at Rancho Mirage High School, I ran into Dr. McDaniel, and I've known him a long time. And every time I see him, he, uh, you know, he lobbies me for money. And I got to say, though, he was lobbying me for money for another school. And I really, really appreciate that, that support he was giving another school, so that's what we're all about. Sorry about that. Okay, next up is board action items. Item 14A, approval of certificated and classify employee transactions, OE 4.4. May we get a motion to move, move that? I have a motion, how about a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That motion passes. Item 14B is approval of positive certification of solvency, second interim report for fiscal year 2022-2023, OE5. I guess I'll ask for a uh, motion and a second, and then we'll have Dr. Murray present on this. I'm with for approval. We have a motion, how about a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. 
and Dr. Murray. Great, thank you, President Girardi, and good night. Or, <laughs> okay, I'm, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. See you later. <laughs> Any questions? All right. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's start over. All right. So before I begin, as I usually do, I'd like to thank and publicly recognize our Director of Fiscal Services, Tony Carrillo, uh, for the work he and his team did to complete the second interim report on time. Uh, an update of all funds can be found in the SACS report that you received a copy of. Um, as, and as we usually do, we'll be focusing primarily on fund three and fund six. Collectively, they're referred to as fund uh, 01, which is the general fund tonight. Uh, for tonight, as I usually do with all interim reports, uh, I'll, be, uh, I'll provide a brief update from Governor Newsom's budget proposal in January, as well as important second interim report financial data. Uh, these data uh, relate to multiple considerations, including being financially responsive to our declining enrollment, regularly evaluating the costs associated with TK3 class size reduction, being responsive to employee compensation trends, continuing to find ways to be fiscally responsible with special education related support, making sure our teachers have and are using the most current curriculum, keeping our facilities in such condition that they remain the pride of their respective communities and our school district, using our LCAP appropriately and responsibly, being aware that utility costs continue to rise and the need to continually look for ways to decrease those costs. And then uh, lastly, understanding that our contributions to our employees' retirements will continue to increase and plan for those increases accordingly. The second interim report addresses both the current year as well as very preliminary planning for the next two years. And as in all past interim reports, my focus is on the general fund. And know that the status of our other funds can also be found uh, in uh, the SACS report that I mentioned before. As a reminder, there are three possible certifications, <clears throat> positive, qualified, and negative. Our objective is to present interim financial reports that meet the requirements of a positive certification. And then, uh, as you can see in the SACS report on the very first page, uh, after the cover page of the SACS, you can see our certification recommendation to President Jordy and the rest of the board. <clears throat> Uh, as you may know or remember, this is the second of two interim reports that I shared with the board uh, this school year. The first interim report was shared with you back in December. What I'm sharing with you tonight, uh, in addition to a quick glance to components of the governor's 23-24 budget proposal, is where we are financially with funds through January 31st of this school year, as well as projections for the remainder of this fiscal year. Guidance for the second interim report can always be found through the uh, Riverside County Office of Education. And because the second interim report addresses not only the current, but also two subsequent years, we also rely on information from School Services of California the Department of Finance, known as the DOF, and then also the Legislative Analyst's Office, or the LAO. So now looking at the themes related to the Governor's 23-24 budget proposal, uh, we're seeing a shift or a pivot from COVID-related budgeting to more uh, of a, um, let me see, I think I'm back, there we go. Um, to a more normal budgeting pr uh, process by the state. Uh, over the past couple of years, post-pandemic, the economy was strong and the state was better uh, able to prepare for potential economic downturns uh, like what we may be experiencing right now. Uh, constant and persistent inflation 
uh, and the specter of a pending recession are influencing consumer spending habits that will undoubtedly have an impact on the state's budget for at least the remainder of this year and most likely into 2024. Both the governor and the legislature understand that education funding in California has lagged in the bottom half of states when comparing education funding nationally. The governor's January budget is attempting to keep investments that have been made the last couple years. Lastly, the, given the concern about the economy, the governor has not proposed a myriad of new one-time programs than he has done in his previous two budgets. Shifting now, we're taking a closer look at the U.S. economy. We're seeing an economy that's being kept in check by inflation, uh, available and qualified labor shortages, and supply chain issues for many of the goods that we use. Here on slide 12, you can see a common graphic that I try to include in all my budget presentations, and that is uh, in that it's difficult to share anything related to the economy without taking a look at the stock market. All three of the major averages suffered their worst year since 2008, snapping a streak of three years of successive growth. With about 50% of the state income tax being paid by just 1% of Californians, the state's highest income earners make personal income tax, or PIT, a volatile revenue source for us. Uh, lastly, uh, as we move into budget season, another issue that will muddy our ability to create a rock-solid budget for next year is the IRS's announcement that residents and businesses in 44 counties, including Riverside County, will have an extra six months to file their income taxes. The Franchise Tax Board followed suit, and now state and federal taxes will be due from Californians in these counties on October 15th. Since the governor's May revision will be released before the extended deadline, the level of personal income taxes, the largest source of state revenues, will be an undetermined factor. Uh, this will potentially lead to more conservative revenue estimating on the part of the Newsom administration than absent these extensions. Here on slide 13, you can see that with respect to jobs, we are still lagging pre-pandemic job levels in labor force participation, and the data for California closely mirrors these national data as well. Uh, while the median price of homes in California in 2022 dipped from 782,480 to 777,500, 500 mortgage rates have spiked, making it harder for first-time home buyers to purchase homes. This forces many of our students' parents to rent and not own a home. Uh, and within California, median prices vary widely compared to 2021. In Santa Barbara County, as an example, the median home price dropped over 28%, while in Napa County, the median price rose over 29%. And here in Riverside County, the median home price rose 3.6% to $610,000. If we look closely at the numbers behind the governor's 23-24 budget proposal, we're seeing a slight increase to Proposition, proposition 98 expenditures. And remember, Proposition 98 is the proposition that guides education funding, education funding, as well as the public school stabilization account. So to summarize the governor's uh, budget and the economy. There's a lot going on in the state and the world today that ultimately impacts, uh, impacts our district as we plan uh, for the future. With the governor's January budget proposal, it gives us our first chance to put some substance behind our planning for the following school year. Uh, the 8.13% COLA is nice to see. However, as I often do, I caution that with uh, declining enrollment and attendance rates that will most certainly impact that number. And then also our unemployment insurance rate next year will also be significantly lower than current year. In Governor Newsom's 23-24 budget, he does not include any new funding relief for us for either CalSTRS, and as you know, that's the retirement system for teachers, or CalPERS, which is the retirement system for our uh, classified staff. The good news is that STRS employer rates are projected to be flat 
as you can see, uh, while PERS employer rates are projected to only increase just a little bit. With respect to current reality, the budget picture in the second interim, I have included more information on ADA here on slide number 19. Uh, in February, the CDE certified the 2022-23 first principal apportionment, or what we call P1, and it establishes all districts' monthly state aid for February through May. Uh, the certification uh, brings one important change to the determination of our district's average daily attendance for last year and this year and moving forward, and that change is the extension of Education Code 42 238.05, which permits a school district's LCFF calculation to utilize the greater of current, prior, or the average of three years prior ADA, which is really helpful for us. This is a permanent change in law now that will remain in effect until the law is amended. And as you can see from the table on this page, the permanent change significantly helps us. Here on slide 20, the Dr. Senior A slide, uh, the, uh, you're welcome. Uh, here on slide 20, the bottom red color, the easily distinguishable red color uh, at the bottom of the graph, uh, shows this year's enrollment pattern. And you can see it's, it's, it's really following the same enrollment trends as, as the year progresses. We start off a little low and then immediately we increase our enrollment with the exception there being the COVID uh, year. Um, th where that did not happen. Uh, but you can see we're uh, almost where we're, we're still a little bit above where we started the year with. So that's definitely positive news. Here on slide 21, it deals specifically with the unrestricted general fund money, the fund we get the most of and the fund we spend the most from, and the fund that we use primarily when discussing employee compensation. As a reminder, it is with this fund that we can buy just about anything that the law allows us to buy. If we take a closer look at this year, 22-23, uh, total unrestricted general fund revenues at second interim are $329,943,699. Total expenses and uses are $345,114,464. And so you can see we uh, continue to be in a deficit budget scenario. Total expenses and uses are 345,000, as I said. T uh, taking a closer look at what comprises these numbers, let's first look at the 286,337,249 in expenses. This a figure, again, assumes that everything that we have budgeted for people, materials, supplies, contracts, et cetera, will be spent this year. Under transfers and other uses, you can see we have a total of 26,825,473 listed. Comprising that number are several items, 333,000 in retirement pool contributions for Teamsters 1 and 2, 2.53 million for our property and liability insurance contribution, $1,000 to nutrition services to fund the 181st instructional day, and the remaining 23.9 million was transferred to the reserve fund for other capital projects to be used if needed to close the 22-23 budget as well as to build the 23-24 budget. Our July 1, 2022 uh, beginning balance was 41,120,857. As you can see, we're projecting our June 30th, 2023 budget to be 25,950,92. Uh, and you can see uh, of that 25,950,92, we have $150 representing what is in the warehouse or cash on hand. Uh, 8,529,807 represents assigned but unspent funds. And then the 16,438,903 represents the minimum 3% reserve that we're legally required to keep on hand in case of a financial emergency. And again, if there were a true financial emergency, that would last us about two weeks. That leaves 831,382 right now that's estimated uh, excess, at the, uh, excess at the end of the year. If we look at the bottom line in 23-24 and 24-25, you can see that we're projecting about 26.9 million in fund balance right now in 23-24 and about 22.8 million in 24-25. 
And then and keep in mind those bottom line numbers do not assume any changes in pay, but they do assume that our current spending continues at current levels, specifically STRS and PERS contributions, maintain their current published rates, special ed contributions continue at their current trajectory, health benefits costs continue as they currently are trajectory, and then our enrollment and associated ADA continues to decline at projected rates. Here on slide 22, uh, in looking both at the restricted and unrestricted or combined general fund picture, you can focus first on the first column where you see revenues are outpacing expenditures by about 40 million. And this is due to restricted funds and fund balance pending planned expenses. For 23-24 and 24-25, you can't really compare revenues and expenditures to the current year because this year's revenues included carryover funds from the previous year. And keep in mind, if you would, that none of these figures in the out years include any modification to salary schedules, and they do assume millions in reductions in the expenditure column that reflect our necessary adjustments to declining enrollment. Also, revenues listed in 22-23 show $178,650,743 in restricted one-time funding, including all those CARES funds that you're aware of, GEAR and ESSER. And then looking at 23-24 and beyond, and as stated earlier, the revenues are tracking based on a decline in enrollment, but a projected slight increase in ADA. All right. So on slide 23, uh, it, to summarize some of the key points for tonight's presentation, you can see that uh, as of right now, we continue to meet our financial obligations for this school year. Uh, and then again, I remind you of the considerations I shared with you at the beginning of the presentation uh, and highlighted that we really look at these pretty much every day and they shape what we do. So with that, I uh, summarize by saying uh, we're recommending to the board this evening that you approve our second interim report with a positive certification. Thank you, Dr. Murray. Anybody have any questions or comments? No? All right. I think we're good. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Now right, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Can we get a vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 That motion passes. <clears throat> Item 14C, <clears throat> approval of monitoring report OE12, governing policy, operational expectations, Facilities? Yes. Good night. Different? <laughs> yes. Any questions? <laughs> okay. All right. Dr. Murray. Or yes. let me get a, a motion. And a, and a okay. Second. Can I get a motion, please? <laughs> we have a motion. How about a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Dr. Great. Murray. Okay. So with respect to OE12, and as you saw from reading the report, we're attesting that we're in compliance with all 14 policies within OE12. Uh, so let's get started. And looking at the first seven policies that you saw in the report, they're all directly related to the day-to-day -day work of facilities. And we have Julie Arthur in the uh, audience tonight. So if I mess up or anything, she can, I'm sure, step in and, and straighten it out. Um, if you look at the policies and taking an aggregated look at the seven policies, uh, the first seven policies, they're clear in that we must have a plan regarding facilities and build facilities in areas that make sense and are based on logical criteria while being adaptable to enrollment changes to not overload or underload schools. This will be especially critical once we have a clear picture of our district's enrollment with new TK enrollment legislation that is currently being phased in. The OE 12 policies are clear in that we are to look at all the variables for identifying school sites and do our best to build and remodel district facilities that are environmentally sustainable and that promote creativity and innovation by our students and our teachers. And the policies are clear that facilities are to be high quality and at the same time you expect us to ensure that any change orders are necessary and appropriate that will ultimately result in a high quality and efficient facility while also working hard to stay within uh, established budgets. So that's really the, f the, the summary of the, um, the first seven. Uh, with respect to successes and, and, and challenges that, that we encounter meeting those seven policies, 
As you know, we have a rigorous and highly detailed master plan that the facilities department follows every day. Uh, that is easily acceptable also on the district's webpage and we review and make sure that modifications uh, are made to it annually. Uh, we believe these policies provide a clear and concise expectation of communicating with the public regarding school construction projects and this is a good thing, we, we feel. In addition, the state or the Division of State Architect has adopted the new Green Code uh, which is first in the nation when it comes to building standards code. And these codes are aligned to the board's expectations regarding sustainability and the reduction of greenhouse gases in the environment. Uh, lastly, and as you know, our district has been highly successful in obtaining state funding and grants for construction that help fund the sustainability elements, uh, elements in our projects. And then also with regard to things we consider challenges associated with these expectations, the most notable variability, of course, is the change orders as we receive them. Oftentimes, and despite pre-construction investigation, many of the requisite change orders that eventually come to the board for your approval are not foreseeable without disturbing or destroying existing sidewalks, floors, ceilings, or walls, and they're discovered along the way. Moving on to the the next group of policies, A through 12, they're all clearly related to the day-to-day -day work of our maintenance and operations department. Evidence presented shows that we're compliant with these five policies and you saw the uh, supporting documentation in the appendix. Uh, in taking an aggregated look at the policies A through 12, you're, we're asking, uh, or you are asking us to annually identify unsafe conditions and then require us to fix them. And not only do you expect us to keep facilities, systems, and good operating order by creating a plan for annual maintenance, you also expect us to keep the facilities clean. You expect that we follow law and allow non-district entities to use our facilities if they're able and available and at rental rates that are reasonable and that we bring to you on a regular basis for approval. And then with respect to the, again, challenges and successes related to uh, these uh, policies 8 through 12, 97% uh, of our schools surveyed have reported being satisfied with overall cleanliness of the schools, safety and facility and sanitary conditions. All 28 schools that were evaluated in 2021-22 met or exceeded identified expectations for cleanliness. Uh, our MNO staff completed 86% of the work orders within 60 days. Uh, and you see that an, an updated uh, board approved use of facilities fee schedule is listed there and it includes fair market fees to be collected from outside agencies per the Civic Center Act. And then again, regarding things that uh, are challenges for us in meeting these policies in a compliance way, performing the routine emergency work orders with minimal disruption of the learning environment to assure district facilities continue to meet board policy expectations is really the biggest challenge. Uh, another challenge is that short of having staff to solely perform preventative maintenance, employees have to balance between preventative maintenance with the day-to-day -day work order priorities. Uh, emergencies obviously always take priority and oftentimes, however, that causes preventative maintenance to take a back seat. And then finally, the last couple uh, policies, 13 and 14, they're all clearly related to the day-to-day -day work of purchasing in collaboration and coordination with maintenance and facilities. Uh, evidence presented to you shows that we're compliant with these two policies and taking an aggregated look at 13 and 14, you're asking us to regularly consider how long capital items are expected to last and that they are sustainable when we purchase them. Uh, you also require that only you, the board, can authorize the building or renovation of district facilities and not the superintendent or his designees. Regarding the uh, challenges and successes with respect to these, and even over the last 10 years, we've attested that our inventory control processes are compliant uh, they have improved greatly over the last five years especially, and we attribute this improvement to several factors, not least of which is the OE-12 monitoring process itself. Another positive outcome was related to our ability to effectively surplus items that were obsolete and ready to be replenished or replaced. Yet another reason for this improvement was us procuring and using contemporary inventory control technologies that help us better track assets uh, and assess our assets. And then. 
Uh, some of the challenges, of course, deal with uh, legislation that we can't do anything about, and that is uh, the $15,000 public work contract code bid limit and the dearth of willing contractors, especially in our Coachella Valley area, to do the work. Uh, in today's world, almost everything related to capital project work in and around schools costs well more than $15,000. And as a result, we often need to utilize the f informal bid process and sometimes the formal bid process to get the work done quickly. Uh, informal bid uh, process allows us to ex expedite projects, but it always doesn't allow us to get the best price for the work that we feel that uh, is the best price. So that is a quick review of OE12, and uh, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them at this time. Anybody have any questions or comments? No? no? Thank you very much, Dr. Murray. I just, I think I I'm just want to say for you and all of the facilities, teams across the district, uh, when we visit schools, and I think our board members um, might also agree that we are so impressed with how you're um, maintaining and upgrading and keeping our campuses so clean uh, because we, we see it every day, all day. And I'm very proud to see that uh, we are maintaining and upgrading uh, each day as we help our kids learn. Thank you. Anybody else? I just want to say how your school looks is really important to students and staff. And I think we do an excellent job in maintaining and building new facilities and really taking into consideration how does it affect students, how does it affect stam families, the community, and the staff. So congratulations, facilities. Good, I'm good too. All right, we have a motion and a second on the floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion passes, takes us to item 14D, approval of proclamation of March is Music in Our Schools Month, March 2023, OE11. Can I get a motion to approve? I move for approval. How about a second? Second. All right, and our student board member, Christopher, will read the proclamation for us. Whereas for more than 30 years, March has been officially designated by the National Association for Music Education, named as the Music in Our Schools Month, M-I-O-S-M, encouraging students across the nation to focus on music education and whereas music education is part of a well-rounded education for every student as outlined in the Federal Every Student Succeeds Act, and whereas the purpose of this celebration is to raise awareness for the lasting positive impact of music education on the academic, personal, and professional growth of our students, and whereas music education shapes the way our students understand themselves and the world around them, allowing for deep engaging engagement with learning, and whereas music in our schools month reminds us that school is where all children should have access to music, and whereas music educators, students, and communities throughout California demonstrate the importance of quality music education programs to the lives of young people, and whereas the music educators of the Palm Springs Unified School District enrich the educational experiences of students at all grade levels by teaching general music, vocal music, instrumental music, exploratory music, and appreciating diverse musical styles, and whereas the state of California joins our music students, educators, and communities in celebrating the power of music education. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Education of the Palm Springs Unified School District does hereby proclaim that March 2023 is Music in Our Schools Month. The PSUSD Board of Education encourages our citizens to celebrate and acknowledge every day, and especially in March, the music education that music education is an essential part of every student's well-rounded education. Thank you very much, Christopher. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. 14E, adoption of resolution number 2022-2023-42, declaring the support of the National Child Abuse Prevention <coughs> Month, OE7. Can we get a motion to adopt that resolution? Move for approval. How about a second? Second. Any comments? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 14F, <coughs> approval of annual renewal of services, super co-op SY 2023-2024 for nutrition services, OE 6.3. Can we get a motion to approve that contract? Move for approval. We have a motion, how about a second? Second. Motion and a second, any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 14G, approval of modification number one to income agreement number C, 1008840 with Riverside County Superintendent of Schools participa for participation in the Head Start and Early Head Start Federal Programs, OE 10.8. How about a motion? I move for approval. Second? Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 That motion passes. Item 14H, approval of change order number one with Bernards for the Palm Springs High School modernization project at Palm Springs High School. Agreement number C0003692, OE 12.14. Can we get a motion to approve that change order? Move for approval. We have a motion. How about a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 14J, approval of compromise and release agreement number 22-23-04 between parents and district dated February 24th, 2023, OE 6.1. How about a motion for that? Move for approval. We have a motion, how about a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Which one? Item 14I, adoption of resolution number 2022-2023-30, classified layoffs, OE 4.4. May we get a motion for that? Move for approval. We have a motion, how about a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion passes, thank you. All right, um, items 14K to 14O, we're going to uh, move in one vote and excuse me one motion and vote on it as one so it's award of lease lease back contract to west coast air condition company for the construction of the cathedral city high school and della s lindley elementary school modernization product projects an award of lease lease back contract to bernard brothers inc for the construction of the james workman middle school landau elementary school and sunny sands elementary school modernization projects. Can I get a motion to approve items 14K to 14O? Move for approval. We have a motion, how about a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That motion passes. 14P, approval of expulsion case 2022 slash 2023 42, recommendation and findings of fact and conclusion of law, OE 11. How about a motion? I move. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 14Q, approval of expulsion case number 2022-2023-43. Recommendation and findings of fact and conclusion of law. How about a motion? Move for approval. And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 14R, approval of expulsion case 2022-2023-44. Recommendation and findings of fact and conclusion of law, OE 11. Can we get a motion? I move for approval. Have a motion, how about a second? Second. Motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then finally 14S, approval of expulsion case 2022 slash 2023 42. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Approval of expulsion case 2022 slash 2023 46. Recommendation and findings of fact and conclusion of law, OE 11. Move for approval. We have a motion, how about a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 what I do? Did I miss? Okay, 
Let's I, do I'll it do it twice. again. There we go. Just think. 14Q, approval of expulsion case 2022-2023-43, recommendation and findings of fact and conclusion of law, OE 11. I move for approval. We have a motion, how about a second? Second. We have a motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 15 is superintendent's consent item, so we're going to uh, vote on items 15A through 15K unless somebody would like an item pull for further discussion. Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion. Move for approval. How about a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That motion Aye. passes. Board consent item 16A, approval of meeting minutes from February 28th, 2023. Can I get a motion to approve the board meeting minutes for February 28th? Move for approval. We have a motion, how about a second? Second. A motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. 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 17 is information item, submission of early Head Start and Head Start reports per requirements for the Head Start Act for January 2023, OE 10.1. The board has received and reviewed this information. Uh, item 18 is suggestions for future agendas. Okay, hearing none. Item 19 is uh, setting the regular meeting of the next board meeting. Uh, the regular meeting will be on March 28th, 2023 at 6 p.m. and we will be meeting at Desert Hot Springs High School. Item 20 is to debrief. So do our student board have members have anything they'd like to share? Like how much fun you had tonight? <laughs> Um, so I just wanted to talk about a little bit, we've been talking a lot about inclusivity today, and it's made me think about um, how I'm one of the link crew leaders at my school, and as a link crew leader, what we have to do is go into the freshman classrooms, and once a month, we give them a class, and um, we play games with them. Um, specifically, my class is the Spina, the Sp sorry, uh, the Spanish speaking class because um, it's a lot of immigrants from South American countries and Mexico. Um, I'm one of the few Spanish speakers at my school or in my ASB program at least and that's why my little group is designated to that class. Um, I've noticed that there's a massive disconnect between the students who come here and students accepting them and then the staff which is also because there's a massive disconnect between staff and students, but that's its own issue on its own. Um, the disconnect between students and immigrant students makes it really hard for these students to integrate themselves into our society and to, into our lifestyles. Um, that's what we're asking of them when, you know, they come here, they're, they're looking for a better life and they're looking for a fresh start. Um, when they're in these classes full of other kids just like them, um, similar backgrounds, similar struggles, and they're all looking for a better future, they kind of hold this, like, they have this energy that no other group of students on campus holds this enthusiasm that no other group on campus holds. And it, it, it just surprises me that it's so hard for them to still connect with these students on campus, um, even with such strong like personalities and enthusiasm. Um, and I just wish that there was more that our district could do and our staff could do to kind of bridge that gap between students and staff and staff, immigrant students, and just all around. Um, I just wish that there was more communication. Um. I think it would be a lot easier if maybe we had more clubs um, or more programs on campus that encouraged more student involvement, um, maybe more electives that also 
brought in um, other students that, sorry, I feel like it would be easier if we had more elective programs that were more easily catering to students that don't speak English. Um, if we had more Spanish aids, more translators on our campus, and if we had just more overall communication. Thank you, Christopher. Yep, thank you, Christopher. Brian? Sure, my pleasure. It's our pleasure, and I got to say, Christopher, to get the conversation started, somebody's got to start, and I think you did. So, good job. Yeah. All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much.